Brothers and sisters, pray with me. Gracious Lord, through your powerful spirit, we are transformed. May we be a beacon for the world, a beacon of your love, your joy, and your hope. Amen. One of the things that Shelter in Place provided for us as a family was a little bit of extra time. Without the grind of activities outside the home, we had more time to enjoy things like family game night or Star Wars movie marathons and even nightly reading time. We also enjoyed watching some TV together, something we don't normally have the time or the energy to do, especially on school nights. Grace and I loved catching up on our favorite shows on HGTV and DIY Network. You see, she and I love a good home improvement project show. Those before and after pictures, while well, they get us every time. We definitely love the big reveal at the end of those shows, but also watching the hard work and craziness that happens during a home improvement project is just as fun. There's something about knowing the story behind the transformation that makes the end product even more valuable and beautiful to behold. This week, in our four weeks together stewardship study, we look at this same idea, the idea of transformation and the work it requires. The epistle for today from Thessalonians is the story of a community transformation. It is the story of the work required to make that transformation. It is the story of the power necessary to convert, build up, and sustain a new way of life. And as you would expect, the big reveal is heavenly in its glory and wonder. So let's take a look at Thessalonians. Verse nine says, for the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God. Any improvement project begins with clearing away the old to make room for the new. For the Thessalonians, becoming God's creation required a cleaning out of their lives all that was untrue, unworthy, false. It required them to completely reorient themselves to a new way of living. As straightforward as that sounds, you and I both know how hard change can be. Even breaking one small habit, like biting your nails, can take weeks, months, even years to accomplish. For the community of believers in Thessalonia, this was a total life transformation, one that required constant diligence and attention to the new way of living. Once they had begun the work of clearing away the old and corrupt from their lives, the Thessalonians began to build the foundation of a new life. This foundation was based firmly in the life and teachings of Jesus. Verse six says, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord. The Thessalonian church members began to walk in the footsteps of Jesus, step by step, creating a new way of being. Again, this transformation was not easy. Verse six goes on to say, for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit. Regardless of the intense persecution and pressure from the world around them, these new believers heard God's word and stood firm in their faith. Not only that, they did so with joy so much joy that we hear later in verse 6 that they became an example to all believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The before and after picture of Thessalonia is clear. Before Paul shares the gospel with them, they are a community of idol worshipers living life under the whims of popular culture and secular life. After 
They are a beacon of God's love in the world. Lives transformed and as a community working in the world to share God's love and build the kingdom of heaven on earth. Now here's a question for you. Is it believable, possible, that the community and Paul were able to do this on their own, under their own power only? I say no. Total transformation of the human heart and life requires more than just an inspirational speaker and a compelling story. Total transformation requires the power of God and the Holy Spirit. In verses 4 and 5, Paul says this, For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you. Because our message of the gospel came to you, not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. What makes the gospel so convicting so able to change lives and to transform the human soul is the power of God. God chooses the Thessalonians, fills them with the power of the Holy Spirit, provides scripture to guide and teach them, gives them a faithful leader in Paul and a savior to imitate. And they are transformed. Brothers and sisters, God too chooses us, fills us with the power of the Holy Spirit in our baptism and the Eucharist, provides us the word of God in scripture, and gives us the living Christ to imitate and follow. This is the good news today, that we too can be transformed by God's power in our lives. We too can imitate the hard work of the church in Thessalonia, cutting out all that is untrue, unworthy, and false from our lives. We also can dwell in the word of God, be imitators of Christ, and use our joy to inspire others. Most importantly, we too can open ourselves up to the power of God and allow this great architect to powerfully transform our whole lives, top to bottom. When we do this, we become a new creation. Like the Thessalonians, we can shine light into the world. As verse 8 says, For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known. Let us be transformed by the power of God so that we too may help bring the world to the knowledge of our joyful, loving Savior.